What is up, friends? I am coming to you after class to talk to you about an issue I've had a few questions about over the past couple months, and it just makes me think it's worth coming on and doing a broader video about. The issue is shoulder pain. Now, I am not a doctor, and I'm not a physical therapist, so I'm not coming at you with consultation or advice in either of those capacities. Let's just be clear. But I am a layperson with some understanding of the shoulder joint and the body, and hopefully this video will just help you be a little bit better informed in your own exploration of your pain, and in possibly being better equipped to ask questions of the medical professional in your life to get to the root cause of the pain you're experiencing. This also might just be important to help you prevent pain, which would be make me very happy. <laughs> okay, so the issue is really first and foremost understanding the shoulder joint. We have to understand the component parts, and I'm going to go pretty fast and pretty superficial here, but hopefully this big picture will give you enough leads to follow up and of course ask me questions below and I will make something more detailed on more nuanced pieces, okay? The shoulder joint is made up of your shoulder blade and your upper arm. I focus on the shoulder blade, I'm calling it shoulder blade instead of scapula because it's really almost, it's very abstract for us to realize that this joint is made up by this little bone. We tend to think of that bone as just kind of floating around on our back, but in fact, it's this tiny, very shallow edge of your shoulder blade that makes up the joint where your bone, your arm bone attaches to your body. So anything you want to do with your arm implicates your shoulder blade and anything you want to do with your arm that takes any type of strength really implicates your shoulder blade because you don't want to be doing that exercise with just hand muscles. You want to be doing that with the muscles of your trunk, of your body, of your core. All right. Otherwise, this joint, like we said, it's in a very shallow socket it is going to be vulnerable and it's not muscularly supported movement. So a few things to think about. The shoulder blade has a large range of motion. It has a beautiful orbit up and down your ribs, around your ribs. It can tip forward and back. It can scoop under and down. Absolutely look up scapular range of motion videos to see the big picture and get under the skin to look at how your shoulder blade moves. For every position of your shoulder blade, there are corresponding positions of your arm or the way i really should say that is for every position in the world that you want to put your arm right and eccentrics takes us through a lot of them right because we're training and making sure we have good range of motion at this joint for every position you want to put your arm there is a corresponding position of your shoulder blade that makes that safe strong and stable for the joint it's doing that in a few ways number one it's positioning the bone, right? It's positioning the cusp of that joint that the arm bone is sitting in to satellite, to optimally maneuver, to then do stuff at that angle, right? To keep the joint centrated, right? Centered and aligned. Number one, part of that is happening with what we think of as the rotator cuff muscles or we call the rotator cuff muscles. They have more than just a rotational function in the body. They don't just rotate, but they help stabilize and they adjust to help keep that relationship intact, the rhythm, the relationship between shoulder blade movement and arm position. All right, that's number one. Now, one source of pain can be, and is in large, honestly, one of the lowest hanging fruit reasons you might have shoulder pain is when the rhythm and the positions that you're trying to put your arm in are getting out of sync with the positions that your upper back muscles are able to put your shoulder blade into. Okay, so. Here's what I mean. Here's a quick concrete example, and it might capture the pain you're having. Front of the pain shoulder, or front of the shoulder pain is very common, and it's kind of predictable, and let's look at why. We spend a lot of our time in our daily life here, in front of our face, in front of our body, and my humerus, my upper arm, as opposed to like the rest of my arm, okay? My upper arm, it just kind of hangs out here, and it doesn't go very far. Even if I go for a jog, right? Doesn't have a huge range of motion. So it's not putting a lot of demand on the range of motion that my shoulder blade has to go into. And the muscles of my shoulder blade get really used to being at my desk and commuting and driving and staying here, reading, etc. I can do a lot right here and not have to move my back very much. And what happens then is say I want to do something with my arm that's not right here and I try to do it, but my shoulder blade doesn't move because I've deconditioned my upper back muscles and my shoulder blade is just like asleep at the wheel and it's doing desk work. Perfect example is actually, I couldn't have written a better example. Someone who asked me this question who takes my class, I didn't know until recently, is a baseball umpire. 
right? But had years at a desk job. So he's getting pain in the front of his shoulder when he goes to do baseball stuff. Where does baseball bring your arm? All kinds of places, right? Even if you're just calling balls and strikes, it's outside this range. Even if that were what he's all he's doing. I don't know all that it takes to be on par, but assuming he's not just right here, he's got to do out here stuff, right? And in my class, he's doing all kinds of out here stuff. And that's why he thought to ask me about his pain. So what one of the things that can happen is if his upper back is still at his desk and his upper and his arm went to go do baseball stuff, he's going to get a sync and like out of sync with the shoulder blade and the arm movement. And that's going to lead to dysfunction. It could lead to dysfunction in two ways. Number one, like we said, it could be jamming up the connective tissue that crosses the shoulder, the rotator cuff tissue that crosses from the scapula to the arm. Or it could also be because he can't get his shoulder blade to the right position and the mo little muscles can't put the arm in the right position for the right big muscles to do their job, right? So there's lots of orchestration going on at this joint. The little rotator muscles have to put the arm at the right structural position. Part of that structure is so that the bones are talking to each other. And part of that position is so that the muscles, the big picture muscles, your chest, your deltoids, your biceps and triceps, right? They are in your lats, right? Big muscles on your body are able to do power moves <laughs> with your arms. If you can't, it's the little support staff of the rotator cuff that positions the arm bone in relation to the shoulder blade to set up the big muscle guys, right? So there's lots of different ways you could be having pain. Part of it could be the connective tissue pain and part of it could be stress on the joint because you're not able to recruit the right musculature for the movements you want to do. That's going to really come up for you if you're doing stuff over your head with weight or out to your sides with weight or carrying stuff on your arms with a lot of weight. If you're not able to activate the muscles of your back to set up the right position of the alignment of that joint to recruit the big picture muscles, you could have pain. So I bring this up about the desk work because it comes up so frequently that we're doing this kind of stuff in our office job and then we want to do all the fun stuff in our daily life, let alone in the centrics. So that could be a source of your pain. To recap, the Big picture is your shoulder blade and your upper arm have a rhythm. They have a rhythm of movement, positional movements that they want to work in to optimize the position of the joint. Positioning of that joint is critical for any kind of movement you want to do with your arm because the position of the joint is going to help the muscles that cross or the tendons of the muscles that cross the joint glide past each other and not get what we would probably call impinged or pinched. Different types of pain you experience is going to be indicative of different type of dysfunction. So that's one, just one type of dysfunction. Arthritis is a very common dysfunction. Also related, arthritis we know can be prevented by moving a joint through its range of motion. Well, if I don't move that joint through its range of motion and all I do is stay here in desk life, that is a very common source of arthritic pain, arthritic pain at the joint. Final piece is we could get pain at the joint from it being overtaxed and relying on those little muscles that are really just there to do positional work and then be like, all right, I clocked in, I position the shoulder blade and arm where it needs to be. Okay, big team, where are you? Where are you deltoids? Where are you biceps? Where are you lats? What are you doing? They are, they are trying to get in position and they can't. And so the big muscles can't come in and do the heavy lifting. And like so many times we have pain in the body, it's when one muscle is being recruited to do the job of another. Right. And then that muscle rightfully complains because like, that's not my job. And if it's little muscles doing the job of big muscles, they're really going to complain because it's not their job and they're outmatched. All right. So big picture, guys, I hope this is helpful. Like I said, this is just the front of the shoulder pain is very common because of the specific dysrhythm that we get into when we go from desk to anything else. Right. Anything that's outside of the range of motion of desk. But you could have pain in all different types of places and, and ways in your body. I've just presented the lowest hanging fruit as I see it. I hope it's useful to you. If I've triggered any questions that you would like further elaborated on, please let me know. Otherwise, if this has been helpful also, please let me know. And I really hope it was. See you in class or see you otherwise online. And here's to getting out of pain in general. And here's especially to getting out of shoulder pain.